everybody, it's Louise, Louise McKay Art, and I'm just going to show you the creation of a jar lid from start to finish, from taping it off to painting it, to resining it, and then to removing the tape at the end once it's finally done. So as I've mentioned before um, in prior video, just need some masking tape. I've pre-cut out a little circle that I'm going to put inside here, just fit it inside here. So when I get ready to tape it off, I don't have to tape all around the bottom. It'll already be pre-covered. And then I just take the tape, and this is all I do, and I tape around the lip. Just right at the edge of the lip. And I go around the whole thing until it's fully done. So I'm just going around the edge. Trying to keep it the same, the same location as I go. And like I say, this doesn't, like I said, this doesn't have to be actually perfect. Just close. Just going along the edge till I get to the final end and then I'll cut it and then blend it together. So now that I got to the end, I'm just gonna cut the end off and splice it up. And then I just hold it down. Make sure you got a good seal. I take care of the inside. In fact, what I could do is just fold it down. This is all I do. And the whole idea of this is so that, number one, I can remove this tape and have a nice perfect line on the resin. And number two, it keeps my inside clean. Kind of making a mess here, but it doesn't matter. And then all I do is I finish the inside with some more tape just to make sure it's fully covered. So I'm just gonna run some along the inside here. And go all the way around. I wanna keep the middle as flat as possible. So when I lay it, lay it down to be, uh, to dry, it won't be encumbered by something else that's gonna make it go cattywampus as it's drying while resining or after painting. So, no magic science to this, it's just cover your sides and your edges and your inside, and then you're ready to go. And that's pretty much it. There you go. And now we gonna paint, we're gonna paint this. So on my way out to Hawaii, I had delivered six jar lids to a client who asked for six jar lids for um, toppers for their cans in their pantry. And now as a result of that, she's asked for six more. Now I don't think I'm gonna be delivering them by hand this time, but <laughs> <laughs> the compliment is, and the nice thing is that she liked them so much she wants to, she wants more, and she's even thinking about making a line of um, skincare products that she wants lids for. So this might work out really cool. 
So what I have here today is a variety of colors, and I just mix these up. I've got Payne's Gray by, Payne, by Arteza and Golden. I've got my Tail Feather, which I have swore I was never going to play with again, but I have. This is the consistency. It feels a little bit thick, but we'll see how it goes. I've got Tail Feather in there. I've got Metallic Cobalt Blue by Artist Lab, Loft and Golden's Turquoise to give it a little more pigmentation. This is my 24 karat gold iridescent gold combination. This is a sea glass with a little bit of pearl sea green by Arteza. And this is Arteza's Pearl Sky Blue with Amsterdam Sky Blue Light. So that's my color palette. I'm going to go in this direction with it. I'm going to lay down my Multi Pro and we'll get this thing started. Okay, I'll be back in a second. So here's my Multi Pro. I have not even stirred it. I'm just going to pour it straight out of the can. This, when I last used it, was quite bubblicious. So I hope some of the bubbles have dissipated. And I need, where's my paper towels? Hello? Huh, I don't know where they are. Give it a little spin. And in case you're wondering, I have it on a little two ounce cup. And I, yeah. Okay, let's lay down the colors. And this is my first attempt here. So let's hope that this comes out nice. Paints are a little bit thick. That's my stomach rumbling. <laughs> that was the blue. This is the sea glass. Yeah, I'll tell you what. The trip to Hawaii was unbelievable. Just gorgeous. Just beautiful. Got to meet and, and uh, visit with classmates from West Point of mine that a lot of them I hardly even knew. Because in that school, when we were going through, it was so rigorous. Really, you don't have time to do a lot of socializing, at least when we were there. Okay, these are definitely thick, but I'm not too worried. We'll see how it goes. Because this is just a jar lid. It's not, um, it doesn't have that far to travel. This is the paint's gray. And I'm actually using this as a test palette for something else I want to create. Okay, so that's that. Now, my cell activator is my American Floatrol cell activator. I took what I had already, and I, because I've been gone for a couple weeks, I just kind of reconstituted it by adding more to it. If you look above, you'll see the link for the American Floatrol Cell Activator Recipe, and video 141. So I'm not gonna talk over this blowout so you can hear how my lungs are blowing so you get here. the idea of what I'm doing with my air. Give it a spin. Okay, let's go another 
another spin. The gold ended up all in one spot. It's kind of weird. Oh, this is really pretty. Really, really pretty. Let's make sure all my sides are covered. Making sure that my jar lid here is all covered up. I think this is just about done. This is beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna call it finished. Let's see if I can lift this up to the light. Oh, I don't have my other light on, oh my gosh. I wonder why it's so dark in here. I'm sorry about that. All right, let's get this side up a little bit. So here's this guy. Look at that, just gorgeous, gorgeous. So everyone, here's my setup for resining. And what I've done is I've wiped down the table, I've wiped down the tops, I've leveled everything out have a thermometer under there that I'm gonna to use to keep track of the temperature, making sure it's always above 70, ideally around 85. And I keep everything tented until I'm ready to go. And then once I'm done, I will come back and retent to make sure there's no dust that gets on once the resin is set and curing. Over here, I have my supplies. I've got two sets of gloves, one simple black pair, and then the nitrile gloves to go on top when I get ready to um, spread the resin around on all these items. Got the respirator, which I won't use because I'll have the door open today. I'm not gonna worry about that. I've got my uh, toothpicks, tweezers, just in case I need to pull something out, and alcohol spritz, my heat gun, and my torch. Paper towels, and these are Kim wipes that are uh, meant for laboratories so they don't leave any dust on something like a stick or a toothpick when you're picking stuff out of your um, creations. And that's about it for the beginning. Right now, upstairs, I have my, uh, I have a little pot of water boiling to heat up the resin to start with. And I will be back in a minute to show you how I measure everything out. So something I did not include is the resin that I'm gonna use. I've got my A, part one and part two, the resin and the hardener, and I'm gonna mix equal parts of both into this cup that's warming up in this little warm bath. And then I'm gonna stir it up for four minutes, stirring gently, not whipping, and then I'll be ready to go. The other thing I didn't mention is that with everything that I'm gonna be uh, resining today, I got a paper towel and spritzed it with some alcohol and then wiped them down with gloves, wiped them down, so that any remnants from any hand handling, from any oils from my skin, will no longer be present when I get ready to resin, and that'll make sure that the resin lays properly. Okay, so I'll be ready to go in a minute, I'll be back. So everyone, I've mixed up equal parts of the A and B, three ounces of each, and now I'm gonna start my timer and I'm gonna start mixing this together. And the manufacturer suggests four minutes. Alexa, set timer for four minutes. Four minutes, starting now. So as I mix this, I'm gonna be sure to keep the stick on the bottom until I get ready to scrape it. And then I'm gonna also run the stick along the sides. And I'm going to be sure not to, not to beat it. I'm just stirring it very gently. And I'm just gonna skip past most of this because you don't need to see me stirring for four minutes. And I'll be back when I'm ready to go and start pouring. So that's basically it for the preparation. Whatever your manufacturer suggests you do, that's what you follow the directions because not every manufacturer goes one-to-one. -one. And this is KS resin and they do go one-to-one. -one. Okay, I'll be back when I'm ready to pour. All right, I'm back. And I'm gonna start pouring. Now I'm gonna focus on the creation of the jar lids and only show that portion during this video, otherwise it's gonna be way too long. So I'm gonna spread it out as best I think I need as I go through here, and I'll come back when I get ready to do the actual uh, spreading of the resin on the pieces. One, 
Now make sure I get these things covered nicely. Now the trick with these things is to make sure you get the sides really good. You really gotta get your finger into the crevice. So as you'll see, I only use one finger primarily and I have it rubber banded so it's nice and taut, my glove. And I just spread it from the center to the sides. I'll put a little bit more on that one. Matter of fact, let me just get a little more on each of these and make sure I've got good coverage. So I've got plenty. For this batch, I made six ounces. I only needed 5.6 and I may do a future video on how I calculate for resin right. mileage. Let's see if I can level this one up a little bit. So push it to the edge. Push it to the edge. Push it to the edge. Make sure you get all the edges covered. And then the sides. Sides, get the crevices. Get in there really good. Okay, it looks good. Get this one. This is probably my showcase one. I think this is the coaster, this is the lid I'm going to showcase for the training or tutorial. Push to the sides. Get over the lip. Having that little bit of extra tape at the bottom helps for a place to grab onto. You get the sides covered. You run your finger through it a few times to make sure that you got in that nook and cranny. So there this one is. We'll come back later to heat gun it. So push to the side. Push to the edge, push to the edge, get the sides. Push to the edge, push to the edge, push to the edge, get the sides. Push to the edge, check in the light, make sure you got coverage, good to go. So I'm gonna skip to the end of the resonating portion. Okay, give it all one good look over in the light. I got air bubbles. I'm mostly looking for coverage at this point. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the heat gone. What I do is I always spritz my fingers with a little alcohol, which you can't see me doing. I could just take the gloves off. Okay, heat gun time. So I'm going to talk through the heat gun a little bit. I turned on the volume so you can hear me talk better, but I basically take the heat gun and I run it over each of the different creations and I keep the heat gun moving. I don't keep it stuck in one spot for very long and I just want to get all the air bubbles, the first round of air bubbles out. I will do this process three times. I'll do it with a heat gun to start with, then I'll do it with the torch the second time, and then I'll do the heat gun a third time. And I usually wait about 10 minutes between each torching or heat gunning and I want to get the sides a little bit just want to make sure I give the ch the resin a chance to evacuate the air bubbles that are available to get out on the first pass so that's all I do for the first round and then I'll come back and take a good look to look for debris or or um, other missing spots I see a spot where I I missed I'll double check this stuff. Okay. I'm going to double check them all since I've, if 
found an unsuspecting spot. And I'm gonna skip ahead here, but I do double check everything. This is where being picky is a good thing. damage control. Get the crap out that you see. I do not have a clean room. I know you can't see from this camera angle, but in the front side of the table, I have two lights that are showing me where there might be some dust. So I'm going to skip a lot here because just rest assured, I'm going through and any dust balls I see, any little dust pieces, that might have fallen in, I'm tweezing them out, or I'm using the toothpick to grab them, and trying to make sure that these are as free of dust as possible. So in my experience working with resin, I find three is a charm with applying a heat source to the resin products. I start with a heat gun, go to the flame, and then I finish up with a heat gun to make sure I've gotten all the air bubbles out and have full smooth coverage. Next, I'm gonna share with you my tent setup. So here's stage one where I set up the lamp on top of a little frame that I built. The frame is where I perch the heat lamp. Ideally I want these to cure 80 to 85 degrees. And then I build a little cocoon out of plastic to make sure that the heat stays inside as it's curing. Now this is just something I do because we're in a colder environment. I want to make sure that the heat stays constant during the curing process. All right, so everyone here we are next day. 24 hours later and they're all done. Now it's a matter of removing. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the tape off the back and I'm gonna pull it away from the, anywhere where it's attached underneath. So I have a free and clear pull when I get ready to pull it off. I'm gonna give it a little heat with the heat gun. I'm gonna find a place to give it a cut. Let's hope we can get a good edge here, the tape. You wanna kinda keep it going much as you can while it's still warm. A little extra on the edge there. Okay. Give it a little smooth over with the Sandpaper. All the way around. Until it feels nice and smooth. Look up to the light. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So everyone, that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial from literally start to finish. Here are the final resin lids and they'll be going in the mail in a few days once they're fully cured. If you have any questions about the process, please leave them in the comments section. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, hit the bell and all, you'll get all my latest art tutorials. Leave a comment, a thumbs up would be nice too. At the very end of this, I will have a link to all of the other lid creation so you can get ideas for other color palettes. I also have a 10% off discount code for KS Resin if you look in the description. Thanks a lot everybody. Till next time, take care.